So let's say we have a Next.js 14 application that will like to add authentication and protect routes. Here we have a simple blog application that has a home, about, contact, and dashboard link. What we'll like to do is protect our dashboard page. There's a few different approaches that we could take in order to accomplish this. But in today's project, we're going to walk through using next off. So if we head over to the off JS docs and we go with version five, we'll start by installing the next off dependency and be sure to include at beta. So within my next JS application in the terminal, I'm just going to paste in the command npm i next off at beta. While the dependency is installing, the next step in the process is to set up our environment and to add a .env.local file. So what we'll do now is within the root directory, we'll go to our .git ignore file. Let's go ahead and ignore our .env file so that if we upload this to git, it's not included. And within the root directory, let's add a file named .env. Now, according to the docs, we need to include the auth secret within our .env file. And let's save the file and we'll head back to the docs. Now we'll need to set up our authentication configuration and there's a few different options that we can choose from. Next, we'll need to set our auth configuration and this is where we can add custom authentication logic, adapters, or even our very own credentials provider. So in the root directory, let's add a file named auth.js and let's paste in the code that we just copied from the docs. Now we need to add our route handler in order to make our get and post requests. So we're just going to copy the file format that's listed in the documentation and paste it within our next app. So in the root directory, let's go to the folder named app and we're going to add another folder. Let's paste in what we just copied from the off.js documentation. And inside of that folder, let's also add a file named route.js. Within it, let's paste in the handlers from the documentation. Notice we're importing the off handlers from the off.js file. Be sure to save this file. And if we head back to the documentation, next step is to add in our authentication method. And there are several different methods that we could take in order to accomplish authentication. In this particular project, we're going to use the OAuth providers. And in particular, we want to use Google as our provider. So if we go to the docs and we click on Google, we see that we'll need to add some information in our environment variables. We'll need to add the off Google ID and the off Google secret. So let's go ahead and copy those variables now and paste them in our .env file. Now we'll need to add in our Google ID and Google secret, and we'll get this information from our Google console. So if we head to googleconsole.com and set up an account, We'll need to set up a Google project that provides the OAuth provider. Inside of the Google console, we'll need to set up a Google project and also capture the Google client and Google secret, which will come from the OAuth credentials that we'll create. So within the Google console, if we click on new project, feel free to name this project whatever you like. Once we've created the project, we'll select it so that we can access its dashboard. What we want to access first is the OAuth consent screen. So we'll click on OAuth consent and we'll begin to follow the steps to set up our consent screen. For the user type, we'll select external. Let's name our project. It'll ask for a support email. And at the bottom, we'll also add in the email address of the developer, which will be ourselves. Click save and continue on the scopes window. This will allow us to gain access to additional information inside of our Google scope. For this project, we'll keep everything at default and click save and continue. We will not add any test users, so we'll con click continue. And then once complete, we'll head back to the dashboard. And we want to make sure that we publish our app so that we get access to it at our local host. Now we see our app is in production and we have the link to go back to testing should we choose to. Next up, we'll click on credentials and we want to create OAuth client ID credentials. So we'll select the application type, which will be a web app. And we want to add the authorized JavaScript origins. The first one is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000. And we'll also need to add authorized redirects. In order to get this information, we'll go back to our auth.js documentation. And what we want is the callback URL. And we're going to copy this information directly as is listed here. And in the authorized redirect URLs, let's paste in the, the URL from where it's listed. This has the example.com. Let's replace it with our local host. 
and then we'll hit add URL. And we're going to also add one more local host 3000. Once you have this information typed in as I do on screen, go ahead and click create. And you should be redirected to the dashboard or the credentials created view. Here you have the ability to copy the client ID and secret. Let's copy this information and paste it into our .env file. Now, if we go back to our auth.js documentation, the next step in the process is to bring Google into our auth configuration. So we'll copy this file directly as is, and then back, and we'll replace the code that's currently in our auth.js file with the code that's in the documentation. And we're not going to manipulate or we're not going to customize or add in the refresh token for this particular project. We're just going to keep it standard as is. Now let's go ahead and test out our, our authentication just to confirm that it is up and working. So if we go to localhost 3000 and we add in API slash off slash sign in, we should be redirected to sign in with Google. Once you enter, once you enter your username, your Google email and password, you should be redirected to the sign in to my next off. You should be redirected to the sign in project window that's letting you know that you're signing in to the project that was created. And here I see the project name that I just set up. Once we click continue, if all is successful, we should be redirected back to the home screen, which is an indication that the sign in to Google actually works successfully. But from a user experience perspective, we don't have the ability to see that the user is actually logged in or nor do we have the ability to log out. So let's go ahead and add in those features now. Now there's a couple ways that we can bring in the user's information into our header or nav bar. For this project, I wanna keep everything as true to Next.js 14 from a server side rendering perspective as possible. So I'm gonna leverage the server side way in order to see if the user is logged in and to display the sign in and sign out buttons. We'll go to our header component and let's go ahead and mark this as a server side component. And the way we'll do so is by making it an asynchronous function. After we've marked the header to be asynchronous, next we wanna gain access to the auth handler that comes from our auth.js file. And a simple trick to import it, if we just remove the T and the H, you should get the option to import it from the at auth file. We'll also want to create a user variable that allows us to get access to the user object. Now what we want is to conditionally render a sign in or sign out button in the event that the user is signed in or signed out. Now because this is server side rendering, we don't have access to the on-click JavaScript handlers. So we'll need to put everything inside of a form. So now let's take a look at the user object to see what options we have access to. As you can see, we have access to the email, the ID, the image, the name. I'm going to go user.email and save the file. And then once we save it, you see that the jadad at google.com is what's displayed because that is our logged in user. Now what I want is to conditionally render either a login or logout button based upon if the user is logged in or not. Let's start by adding in our sign in and logout buttons. And just for simplicity purposes, I'm going to keep it within the same header file. And what I have is a sign in button function and a logout button function. And they both return forms with actions because we're server side rendering. And as you can see, they're asynchronous function and we've declared them both to be server side code. Or what we really want to gain access to is the sign in and sign out handler that we added within the auth.js file. So in order to make sure that this is imported, we're gonna follow the same trick that we did with the auth.js. We'll remove the last two characters. And if we type them back in, we see that we now get access to sign in from at off. And I wanna do the same thing with sign out. And we'll just click save and make sure that it is displayed as an import and we see that it is. Now, in order to display login or logout based upon if we have a user session or not, we're going to use a little JavaScript to help us with that. We'll add brackets and then we'll type in user and we'll add a question mark. And if we have a user, then we want to display lo the logout button. And if we don't have a user, we want to display the sign in button. And once we hit save, we see that button is not defined. Let me change this from an uppercase B to a lowercase B.
And then once we save the file, we see that we now have log out on the screen. So let's click log out. And we once we click log out, we immediately see that we now have sign in display. So we'll click sign in. And as you can see, we're redirected to the API slash off slash sign in. We have the ability to select our users. And you can see that we are immediately redirected back to the home screen and we are logged in. So now the last thing we want to accomplish is to protect this dashboard route. So there's a few different ways we can go about protecting this dashboard route. The most popular way would be to, the, the recommended way would be to add this in as middleware, but eventually we're going to link this user to a database and it doesn't play well with Prisma. Um, so we're not going to use the middleware file for right now. The next off version five is still in beta. The way that we're going to protect this page is by using the off provider from the off.js that we just created. So what we'll do, what we'll do first is we'll start by marking our dashboard page as asynchronous and let's bring in the off handler from the off.js file. And then from it, we want to capture user from the session that we just created from the session variable, excuse me. And then now what we want to do is we'll say if there's no user, we'll say redirect and this will come from next navigation. We want to redirect the user back to the home screen. So if we check it now, we see that we actually have access to it because we are logged in. And just to show that we're logged in, we'll display the user email onto the screen. And we see that it is displaying the JA dab. But now if we log out and we attempt to access dashboard, you see that we'll, we are immediately redirected back to the home screen. That is because we do not have a user session in order to access this page. And as you can see, we can access the about, the contact, and home route without an issue, but dashboard is still protected. So there you have it, just a quick, simple video on how to set up Next Off version 5 and a Next JS 14 application using server-side rendering. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please feel free to give me a like. If you have any other suggestions, leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Love you, man.